And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who is guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, Mark Mann. standing in the open door of the swiftly moving boxcar looked in Congress, out of place. Certainly, Frank Seto wasn't used to this mode of travel. But even with the careful planning you always employ, things can go wrong, can't they, Frank? Yes. You were the brains behind a successful swindle across the border in Tijuana, weren't you? But part two of your plan, in which you tried to outwit your own associates, backfired, didn't it, Frank? And you had to run, leaving $70,000 hidden in a baggage check stand in San Diego. And now, cowering in an empty boxcar, moving through the outskirts of Los Angeles, you wonder if anyone followed you, wondered what's ahead when the train rolls into the railroad yard. Then you hear the voice of your chance traveling companion. Not it, buddy. Don't jump now. Take it easy. I don't want to wait too long. I don't want to get mixed up with any yard cops. <laughs> Sure new to you, isn't it, riding these side door pullmans? Ah, uh, them cops won't do nothing, buddy. Take my word for it. They'll just chase you out of the place. Yeah, you can save your advice. Uh, okay, buddy, okay. I just don't want you to get hurt. I could tell by the way you hopped on down in San Diego that you didn't know much about hey, travel. you're going into the yard. She's slowing down. No, no, she's moving just as fast. Now, don't jump, buddy. You remember all of that, don't you, Frank? The old man's warning, your own nervous anxiety. That moment suspended in space, and then the flashing lights of a crossing signal seeming to rush at you, strike you. Then, nothing. <laughs> Your mind is beginning to clear now, isn't it? And you wonder where you are. Wonder about the strange, blurred circle of faces and voices. This is coming too. Boy, he sure smacked that signal. What do you suppose he jumped off that train phone and was going so fast he could have killed himself? You sent for the ambulance? Yeah, it's on its way. Police, too. Police? No, no. Look, I'm, I'm okay. Now, careful, mister. Don't get up. Leave me alone. I'm all right. Look, you had a bad fall. Now you better let him check you. I'm all right, I said. But they're on their way to be here any minute. It won't hurt to let the doc. Skip it. Doc can look you over. Me? What for? Curiosity. You got a bad case. A very bad case. How do you like that? You hurry away, don't you, Frank? Half running across the railroad yard waiting until you're several blocks away before even stopping to brush off your clothes or trying to straighten yourself up. On Main Street, you enter a nondescript hotel, cross the lobby past a group of hypnotically gazing guests watching television, and you approach the desk. Hey! Hey, anybody here? Room clerk! Come in, come in. Well, what's the matter? Yeah, what's the other fellow look like? What did he win? Never mind the jokes. I've been traveling. Mm-hmm. Want a room and a shower? Yeah, they're separate, but we got them. 
Room's a dollar and a half. Shower's 50 cents uh, uh, in advance. Okay. Mm-hmm. Must, have, must have lost my money. Oh, sure. No, here, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got enough for a couple of nights. Yeah, that's better. All right, I'll get you a key. The shower makes you feel better, doesn't it, Frank? And a good night's sleep helps, too, even in these surroundings. And somehow you feel that you'll be able to work things out. For one thing, the pressure is off for a while. The following day, except for meals, you stay close to the hotel. And that night, you even feel sufficiently relaxed to join a few of the other guests in the lobby as they watch a question-and-answer program on the television screen. (laughs) Very good, isn't it, folks? And now, ladies and gentlemen, our next pair of contestants, this young lady whose name is... Larkin. Nora Larkin. Thank you. And your young gentleman friend... Wally Neal. Tell him your name. <laughs> it's all right, sir. It's all right. Names aren't as important as the right answers for the questions. All right. My name is Wally Neal. <laughs> all right, Wally. Now, you and Miss Larkin have a chance to win some of that lucky cash we've been talking about. It's lucky for you and lucky for those you spend it on. Now, put your hey, hey, excuse me. Hey, what's the matter? Don't you like the program? Just remembered some business I have to attend to. It's a shock, isn't it, Frank? Seeing Wally Neal on that television screen. Wally Neal, one of your partners in the Tijuana Swindle. And you're certain that he's followed you, aren't you? Followed you to Los Angeles. And that's why you take a fast cab ride to the television station. Inside, you oh, learn yes, that sir, you're you just the lucky in cash time. Show. They're breaking now. Well, do they uh, come out this way? Uh, I have to meet a friend. Yes, they do, sir. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Wow, well, now, look, Nora. Don't worry. Look, we won't worry. Look, we won $600. And if you'd like to... But, Nora, I told you I shouldn't have appeared like that. I shouldn't have let you drag me up in front of those cameras. At least you're in control, aren't you, Frank? Finding Wally Neal before he's found you. Wally's the only one who knows for certain that it was you who cheated the others. He can tie it all together. That is, if he gets an opportunity. You follow them outside and down the street to a parked car. Wally helps Nora in, and as he starts around to the driver's seat, you hurry forward. Hello, Wally. Huh? Frank? Yeah, Frank. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny thing. I didn't even know you were in town. Saw you on TV. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, you were just fine. A little nervous, but just fine. Came in very clear. <laughs> yes. I'd like to talk to you, Wally. Um, uh, alone? Oh, sure. Sure, Frank. Yeah. Uh, Nora. Yeah? Nora, this here's a friend of mine. Frank Seto. It's Nora Larkin. Oh, Miss Larkin. How do you do? He, uh, he happened to see me on television. Can you imagine this? Oh, what a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> Those things happen. Yeah, they do, sure. Uh, look, Nora, can I drive you home? Because Frank wants to talk to me. It's it's business. Sure thing. Come on. It's nice of you, Miss Larkin. Not at all, Mr. Sato. Wally's mentioned you to me. Oh, yeah, Frank, sure, I have. Well, you're that sort of fellow, Wally. I bet you've mentioned me to lots of people. Well, shall we get started? Sorry to break up your date, Wally. Nora's quite a girl. Yeah, she's a nice girl. Cooperative, too. Let you drop her off. No explanation. Lend your car. Oh, uh, turn up here, Wally. Or at least the bridge over the freeway. That's a good place to talk, as anywhere. Okay. I just parked by the curb. All right. Yeah, shut her off. Let's get out. What? Oh, no, Wally. What's the matter? Conscience bother you? You talk too much to Dutch and Duke in San Diego before running out? I didn't talk to nobody. I I, I just left. Ah, good boy. And we'll still shut her off and get out. Come on, come on. I'm not going to shove you over the rail. Nobody said you were. I know, but you're nervous, boy. Very nervous. Ah, 
Lots of cars rushing along down there in Coinga. Be a pity for anybody to fall over. Frank, Nora knows where to get us. Now remember that Nora knows. Wally. Wally, boy, you are imagining things. I just want a few questions answered. You, uh... Didn't try to pick up the money alone. Well, how could I? You had the check stub. But you know the check box. Yeah, but I wouldn't try anything like that. Who told the boys where to look for me? I don't know. They found out for themselves. I... Sure, sure. Only the two of us knew. Somebody tells Dutch and Duke to watch for me at the railroad station. Pick me off as I get the 70000 at the check stand. Of course, you didn't tell them you left the money there for me, did you, I didn't Wally? tell them anything. I swear to you, Frank, I didn't. <laughs> easy, Wally. Take it easy. They didn't spot me, you know. I saw Duke waiting. Saw him before he saw me. That's why I beat it. Popped a freight and came up here. Yeah, look, I know, but Frank, listen, I didn't tell anybody. You didn't follow me here? No, I left on my own. Why? Well, I, I, I wanted to be with Nora. We're going to get married. It takes a lot of dough. No, look, look, I'm out of it. I didn't even want my split in the job. No, really, I'm out of it. Sure, sure, why. Uh, you were pretty lucky tonight. Huh? One of the lucky cash winners. Here, I'll give you my head. Three hundred dollars. We won six hundred. Nora has the rest. Here, now, uh, here, look in the wallet. You'll see it's all there. Three hundred. Uh huh. Yeah, it's all here. <laughs> Your identification too. Driver's license, social security. It'll take them a little while to tag you in a strange town. Oh, Frank, Frank, please look. I'll never tell anybody anything. I Frank, know, I'm... Wally. I know. Frank, the guardrail. Sorry, Wally. I'm not leaving my trail for the Frank? boys or anybody. Bye, Wally. Thanks for the spending money. Since tomorrow will be St. Patrick's Day, you've no doubt been getting your share of Killarney on today's radio program. I had thought of describing how your friends will turn green with envy when you power your car with signal gasoline, because signal gas drives sluggishness out of a motor like St. Patrick drove the snakes out of Ireland. Or I had thought of reminding you that your wallet would feel lucky as a four-leaf clover because of signal's good mileage. But sure and begory, when you buy gasoline, there's really just one thing that matters. You want to be sure you're getting the gasoline that helps your engine run most efficiently. And the best way to measure a gasoline's efficiency is by mileage. After all, when your engine runs more efficiently, you save gasoline. Save gasoline with quick starting. Save gasoline with smooth pickup. Save gasoline with full power. And of course, the more gasoline you save, the more mileage you enjoy. That's why mileage is the best yardstick to measure gasoline efficiency and driving pleasure. The reason why so many smart motorists today are switching to the famous Go Father gasoline. To signal, Bigari. It's over quickly, isn't it, Frank? As a shove sends Wally Neal over the guardrail on the freeway bridge. And as you drive hurriedly away in Nora Larkin's car, you're still clutching the leather wallet that Wally handed over to you. He won't be identified immediately, will he, Frank? No. Possibly not for several days. You smile as you light a cigarette. Drive Nora's car back. Park it where she'd instructed Wally to leave it. Place the key under the floor mat, as he was supposed to do and then take a cab back to your hotel. From there, you put through a call to San Diego, person to person, to a Miss Irene Webb. That'll be 95 cents for three minutes, sir. Okay, sister, here it comes. Catch. Listen, listen. I'm mailing you a check stand stub. Stand at the railroad station. Yeah. Go there, pick up the package, and bring it to me here at the Alden Hotel. Shall I give up my apartment, Frank? Uh, no, I wouldn't. 
should give somebody ideas. Just pack and come on. But my things... Pack. We'll have enough to buy other things, Irene. Just do as I say. How soon can you make it? Uh, day after tomorrow. The latest. Uh, all right, if that's the best you can do. Anything else? Like what? Like, do you love me? Oh, sure, sure I love you. Make it fast, Irene. Goodbye. Goodbye, darling. At least that part's in motion, isn't it, Frank? Two days. It'll be that at least before Irene arrives with a stolen $70,000. But during those two days, the $300 you took from Wally's wallet, the $300 he'd won on a TV show, gives you enough to live on comfortably, almost luxurious. And the following morning, you check out of your room. Your first stop is at a fashionable men's shop. A new suit, shoes, hat. A complete change of wardrobe. And then you register at a swank Hollywood hotel. Call Irene and give her your new address. Nothing but the best, Frank. You spend Wally's money freely. And late that afternoon, you're in your hotel suite when the buzzer rings. It can't be Irene, can it, Frank? She's not due until tomorrow. Hello, Frank. Well, Nora. Mind if I come in? No, of course not. Well, this is a surprise, Nora. Yeah, how'd you know where to find me? Uh, just by chance. You, uh, you left an empty book of matches on the floor of my car. They were from the Alden Hotel. Oh. Seems when you checked out of there, you asked the desk clerk. Oh, what? sure, sure, I remember. He recommended this place. Oh, here, here, sit down. Thanks. Right, have a drink? Just name it, I've got it. So I see. Scotch? Fine. What a cozy little place you got here, Frank. Rich uncle suddenly leave you a fortune? <laughs> oh, nothing like that. I looked up a friend here in town this morning. He owed me a few bucks. Uh, plain water, Nora? Uh-huh. Yeah. There you are. Thanks. Yeah, now, what's on your mind? Wally. Huh? Look, Frank, be a good boy and leave Wally alone, huh? What do you mean? He doesn't want to make any trouble for you. Really, he doesn't. Okay, Nora, if you say so. That, that little affair in Tijuana, he just wants to forget about it. Oh, well, tell him I've forgotten it, too. I wish I could. What, what do you mean? Well, Wally's a funny guy. Lately, he's been jittery and upset. Yeah, sure, sure. Get to the point, Nora. Well, then running into you last night, he's scared, Frank. He's hiding out like a frightened rat. Hiding out? I've been up to his apartment half a dozen times today. I called him on the phone. There's no answer. Let's see. He's stuck down in me before. When he's scared, Frank, he, he doesn't want to see anybody. Not even me. Oh, don't worry about it, Nora. He'll be all right. Sure, sure. He, he's just got to think it out all by himself for a while. And he'll call me. Look, if I could just tell him you weren't sore. But I'm not. Thanks, Frank. Thanks a lot. Yeah? Bell boy, sir. Oh, come in. You uh, asked for the evening paper, Mr. Setter? Oh, yeah, thanks. Just put it on the table. Oh, hey, here. here you are. Thank you, sir. Sure, buy yourself a... Something wrong, sir? No. No. Your heart suddenly leaps up into your throat, doesn't it, Frank? The folded newspaper the bellboy had tossed on the table. Nora reaching out for it. You wonder if the story is there, the story of Wally Neal's death, what Nora will think. You hold your breath as she unfolds the paper, glances casually over the front page, and then drops the paper on the chair beside her. Uh, same old stuff. War, Congress, and contempt. It's all you read about nowadays. Look, Nora. Yeah? About Wally. I know how you feel about the guy, and, well, I'm sorry if I gave him the jitters. Let me make up for it, huh? Uh, you don't have to. Oh, but I insist. Why don't we run over to his place? He might be there now. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what. I'll take the two of you out to dinner. We'll make a night of it. On me. What do you say? All right. All right, Frank. Of course, there's no answer at Wally's apartment, is there, Frank? And so you take Nora on to dinner. Just the two of them. 
An attractive girl, isn't she? Warm, exciting. And later, while you're dancing, holding her close in your arms. Oh, come on, sweetheart. Cheer up. Wally's going to be all right. Mm, I suppose so. Sorry to spoil your evening this way. You're not spoiling anything, Nora. Not a very good company, I'm afraid. I disagree. I think you're very nice company. <laughs> Thanks. I mean it. Frank. Hmm? I was wondering, do you think Wally might have... Oh, look, sweetheart, I told you he'll be all right. Stop worrying. Stop thinking about Wally. Just for a little while anyway, huh? Come on. All right. I'll try. You want her to forget Wally, don't you, Frank? But not only for just a little while. But you're almost certain you can get her mind off Wally. As the evening progresses, she seems to be enjoying herself. It's after three in the morning when you see her to her apartment. Leave her after making a date to call for her the next evening. But the following afternoon... Hello, Frank. Oh, I, I thought I was to pick you up at your place later this evening. I wanted to see you soon. Oh, is something wrong? You look like you... Yeah, something's wrong. Here, have you seen this? Paper? No. There, yeah, at the bottom of the page. Okay, so what? The police found a body in the freeway, unidentified. What's this got to do with me? Everything. I had a hunch, so I went down to the morgue an hour ago. It's Wally. Wally? Don't look so surprised. Wait a minute, sweetheart. You needn't put on an act. Frank, I know what happened. I know you killed Wally, and I know why. Look, Nora. I know all about the job you pulled in Tijuana. I double-crossed your partners in San Diego. Okay. So what? So this. Hey, look, Nora, take it easy. I put that letter opener away. It doesn't scare me. Doesn't it, Frank? Doesn't it? Look. As she lunges towards you, you reach out. You miss. And the letter opener rips into your arm. In a blinding rage, you lash out, twist Nora's arm behind her. And then you stumble and both of you fall to the floor. You get up quick. Nora lies very still. Nora. Nora. Oh. Yeah? Who is it? Me, Frank. I mean. Uh, just a second. Quickly. Drag Nora Larkin's body into the closet. Close the door. And look around the room. Her purse, Frank, lying there on the floor. Scoop it up. Slip it under the sofa. Hello, John. Come in, baby. Is that the only girl coming back? Come on, in, baby. Sorry. That's one. I've got some all the way. Get the stuff open. Yeah. Here in the kitchen. That's fine, I mean, fine. Well, well, a private bar. How about off on the ladies' room? Well, we don't have the time. Oh, no, fine. I'll feel better if you skip right now. But why? What's the rush? Never mind the questions. We'll leave. Yeah, I do. Is it so? Look, I'll meet you in the lobby in five minutes. Leave your stuff here. I'll have the bell hop take care of it. Go on, please. Oh, no, wait. Why? Will you stop asking why? Do as I say. Sure. Oh, grab a cab out the airport. Take the next plane. New York's nice to come. I like Seattle. Seattle? Why do we... Just to skip across the border into Canada. That's why, baby. All right, Whatever you say. All this money. Yeah, just for two now, beat it, huh? I'll be waiting for you in the lobby, Dad. Okay, okay. Yeah. You wait, baby. Nice, long wait. Did you know there's now a new improved type automobile battery built to last up to two and a half times as long as ordinary batteries? It's the new Signal Deluxe battery, which is guaranteed a full two and a half years on a service basis. One of the reasons for this amazingly long life in Signal Deluxe batteries is their microporous all-rubber separator, 
which allow freer flow of acid between the plates, yet are impervious to the action of the acid. But longer life is only part of the story. In addition, Signal Deluxe batteries deliver up to 35% more power and don't need water as often. So much for their quality. But how about price? Well, considered on a per month basis, which is really the only way to compare battery costs, Signal Deluxe batteries actually cost less than ordinary batteries. What's more, the generous trade-in allowance signal dealers are now giving for old batteries brings the cost even lower. And liberal credit terms are available. So if you need a new battery, head straight for a signal service station. Be sure of genuine economy, plus dependable service for a long time to come. With the new 30-month guarantee, Signal Deluxe Battery. <laughs> Well, Frank, the way is clearing it. But you've had to kill twice. Wally Neal and then his girlfriend, Nora Lark. Only you feel sure now that it's been worth it, don't you? Yes, considering the 70,000 stolen dollars that Irene brought from the check stand in San Diego. You had to get her out of your hotel room because Nora lies dead in the closet. And now you're through with Irene, too. After all your maneuvering and planning, you don't intend to share the money with anyone. You pack your bag quickly. Take the money from Irene's suitcase. You're sure it's going to be as simple as slipping out the back entrance of the hotel alone, aren't you? Yes. A cab to Union Station. A freight From there, a freighter to parts unknown. You cross quickly to the door and open it. Hello? <laughs> What do you want? My name's Roman. Lieutenant Roman. Homicide. Homicide? Yeah. Well, this is Sergeant Wilson. You're Frank Cheddar, aren't you? That's right. So? Been throwing your money around quite freely, haven't you? Saying you built at the Alden, buying new clothes. What have I had? Too bad you didn't know the money was marked. <laughs> Mark? Yeah. That money belonged to a gent named Wally Neal. He won it on a TV show a couple nights ago. All the bills were marked as part of a stunt. Anyone receiving any of that money was told to notify the television station to get a prize. The man who killed Wally Neal took that money. The money you've been spreading around. Clothing store, cab driver, stuff. up. Half a dozen witnesses who can identify it. Oh, you'd better get these rooms a routine for people. Look, look, I, I don't think... The murder of Wally Neal was a highly advertised murder, Frankie. Too bad you didn't realize that once you killed Neal and took his money, you were a marked man. That whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at the same time. Signal has asked me to remind that today the Red Cross must not only be prepared to save lives and relieve suffering in any disaster that may occur anywhere in this country. In addition, it must provide blood and other needed help for our GIs overseas. Good reason why this year the Red Cross needs more of us to help. And more help from each of us. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman as the Whistler, Jack Moyle, Doris Singleton, Larry Dobkin, Georgia Ellis, and Charles Field. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen with story by Joel Malone, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler was entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on the Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is surely coincidental. Remember to tune in at the same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by the Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>